if if I if I was to tell foreign drivers, you know, like coming that want to come to Japan, one of the things that are important here is just you just have to uh, learn uh, slowly to fit in and not try and come and change things and try to do it your own way. <laughs> I'm very happy to have, a, again, a very special guest uh, on our show, Eyes on Japan, by Hesi Shiga. And uh, he's actually a good friend of mine. I know him for ages. His name is João Paulo de Oliveira. Isn't Thank you right? very much. Yeah, yeah, that's very difficult to pronounce. But uh, yeah. How do you pronounce it? Uh, João. Uh, oh, João. a Brazilian okay. uh, accent on top of the A there. And, ah, okay, so. okay. But everyone calls you JP, right? Yeah, JP. That's uh, yeah. that's actually because it's so difficult to pronounce. Yeah. It is people start calling me JP. So. Right. Welcome to the show. I'm really happy to welcome you here. Um, it's, it's a great honor. Um, some people say you are the most successful racing driver in Japan for the last 10 to 15 years? Thank you. I mean, I, I've i been here for a long time and uh, yeah, had a wonderful career in Japan so far and I plan to keep on going. And um, yeah, I, I think, you know, as long as you believe age is not a problem, you just can carry on, so. Well, you're very modest here, actually. Uh, according to your bio, um, it says here that you basically won every category you participated in, starting from Formula 3. Yeah, I came to Japan. Yeah, I came to Japan to do Formula Three, and uh, and uh, I never really thought I would stay this long. I never thought that it would be a life mission, and uh, it turned out that way. You know, so after winning Formula Three, then there were other steps here, and uh, with you know racing, car racing, it's sometimes you can't really control what happens next. You just have to grab opportunities that come to you. So. You know, at the time, I made decisions to cut, to stay in Japan because Europe or Formula One wasn't really looking, you know, promising in terms of you know all, the, all every other aspect of uh, of the career. So that's why I decided to stay, and I'm glad I did. Excellent. Um, let's but let's start with a traditional question first, of course. Yeah. First of all, where are you from, and what are you doing in Japan? <laughs> Uh, I'm from Brazil. Uh, my both my parents are actually uh, they're in São Paulo. My family lives in São Paulo, big big city. Uh, my both my parents are from the countryside. They came to the big city and uh, raised me and my brother. Uh, my brother now is uh, working uh, with my dad and in, in the company he created. And uh, that was a job I was supposed to be doing as well. But as as my career went on. Uh, obviously, um, you know, life took this path and, uh, and here I am in Japan after so many years. So, uh, Brazil will always be with me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, lately I haven't had much time to go back. So obviously, you know, due to travel difficulties and all of that, you know, with COVID, but, uh, I'm looking forward to next time again. Yes, uh, obviously you came to Japan as a racer uh, yes. very early on, right? Um, but then my question would be, um, how did you get into racing in the first place? Uh, usually there are families, dynasties basically in racing. Yeah. Did you have like uh, relatives uh, racing too? Yeah, so uh, my brother who is uh, one year younger, he, uh, he, it was his idea. Like uh, I, I, to be honest, we were all big fans of, Ayrton Senna and we used to watch the Formula One races every Sunday, we used to get up early, you know, I remember Sundays, my memories of Sundays were uh, my dad waking me and my brother up and saying Senna is going to be on TV soon, like you, we got to come and watch. And we both rushed to the living room and watched the race and uh, it was a big thing and you know, like we always have um, a, a, also a tune, a special tune that every time Senna won a race, that music played on TV, so, and we were used to like. You know, pretty young, and uh, we we're playing soccer in school, and um, but then my brother saw an ad in a mag in a newspaper to uh, drive go karts, and uh, he asked my dad, "Can you take me there?" And I went 
together and I just basically I supported him for two years I watched him drive and I was basically over on his side but I was you know I was the one who was always telling him you know like others are doing this and that and sometimes there was a little bit of friction because like I I didn't have the experience on track but I was telling him you know some you have to do this and that at some point my dad said why don't you just go and try you know and uh and that's what happened. And uh, as I was one year older, my career was quickly going into race cars instead of karting. And then from then it was almost like a meteor. My career just went forward very quickly and abroad. So um, it was, uh, yeah, I think a combination of luck and um, other factors. So Right. In Brazil, of course, football or soccer, um, is a big thing and there are a lot of talent scouts right from yeah. going through village to village to yeah. find the next um, Ronaldo right uh, is there something for motorsports too because uh, Brazil has this amazing history of of course racing drivers right not yeah. only the past but also recent times yeah I mean uh, you know I, I like to tell people like people say like mm -hmm. oh, how big is motorsport in Brazil I say well Maybe it's like the fourth or fifth biggest sport. And they say, how? Like, you know, with all this. Yeah, because soccer is number one, soccer is number two, soccer is number three, and then soccer is number four. <laughs> and then it comes car racing, yeah, you know, because okay. we, yeah. it, the, the soccer culture is so big. Uh, but that big step from going from Brazil to leaving your family, basically, and moving to Europe, um, how did your family cope and how did you cope with that? You were very young at that stage, right? Yeah, I left Brazil, mm. uh, I think I was 19. Mm. And uh, okay. for me, it was like, you know, uh, it was a big shock because I didn't go anywhere like uh, close to Brazil. I went to Switzerland and that was my, that was the first place I lived. And it was very cold. I remember seeing the snow for the first time and I remember everything was so new to me and uh, Switzerland is also a place that um, you know uh, we didn't I at least I didn't feel that Latino vibe you know and uh, it was it was kind of tough in the beginning um, but uh, but I just kept persisting and uh, especially driving the German championship which is at the time was the most difficult Formula 3 the most the highly highest rated F3 championship and to win that was what really gave me the opportunity to come to Japan. So, yeah. You came here in um, 2004, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, um, well, future Formula One driver do the same career step. Uh, for example, my, uh, Ralph Schumacher. Uh, now Pierre Gasly, I think, is the most recent example. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is a good point. I mean, actually, you know, as I said, you know, the the plan was not to stay in Japan, and only driving in Japan. The, the plan was more like that was the alternative at the time, winning the Japanese championship, then I would perhaps have a chance to go back to Europe. But then, you know, at the time, things didn't work out that way. Even though I won the championship and I was doing well, I didn't get that, you know, that space to go into F1. I did get a test with Williams and I did uh, well there and there were some... Uh, chances that we would work together but then the circumstances at the time didn't work in favor so you know uh, there are so many factors that uh, play uh, sponsors uh, country you with uh, country you're from um, and 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 all of this are you know uh, important so yeah but anyway I'm uh, I, I'm I don't like to sound uh, pessimistic about it I actually you know I'm glad that things worked out the way they did because Japan has been so fantastic so tell me about your your first impressions of Japan when you came here uh, well I think uh, Europe sort of prepared me to come to Japan it was kind of like a, a preparation step because uh, you know in Brazil uh, the cultural differences are uh, you know, so many, um, you know, uh, how people communicate, how people, you know, the physical contact and all. So, but I went to, I was in Europe for nearly four years and then coming to Japan was less of a shock, but um, I was very um, happy at first, you know, like I was very 
excited to uh, I like Japanese food, so I like the racetracks are some some of the most um, you know uh, uh, let's say uh, the ones that drivers are more uh, excited about, like Suzuka. Uh, I was really excited to drive at Suzuka, and I think those things are the things I can remember the most. I didn't I didn't really struggle too much because I had other friends living in Gotemba at the time. Uh, foreign drivers and we used to hang out all the time. So I in think Gotemba, that, yeah, yeah, because I the, outside of Tokyo. Well, at the first, actually, the first year I came, I was in Kyoto, and uh, that 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 was a little bit more difficult. But then when I was in Gotemba the second year, then I had uh, three or four foreign drivers that I was close to, and we used to spend days together and do activities together. So that that was a bit of a easier time. Uh, tell me about your first team. Was it really like a Japanese team with Japanese engines and all yeah. the culture you, with, that comes with it? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I got I I got selected to come to a test with uh, Honda Dome at uh, Suzuka, and uh, the reason for that was because I did a race in England, and they had the Lola Dome chassis there, and which was made in Japan, and then the technical director was there. He saw me racing and he said, why don't you come and test at Suzuka for us? And I remember I was so excited because one, driving that car was really fun and then coming to Suzuka. Uh, and then after three days of testing and, you know, which went very well, uh, the day after I was at their factory and they put a contract on the table. And when I saw that, um, it, it, you know, I, I could understand the culture. Uh, I could see that they value y you as a as a professional. That was early on. That was I was 22, 22, 23, 22, 23, I guess. Yeah. And um, I realized, you know, this is an opportunity that I cannot miss because going back to Europe, I would have to find so many sponsors and so much budget to continue racing at a high level um, so I took I embraced that opportunity and uh, and I was with Lola Dom for one year and then the year after was with Tom's and that's when we won the championship so I, first year I was runner-up I finished second the second year I was champion and then I move on to uh, Super GT amazing amazing career and um, I was um, expecting more well, a kind of culture shock because, um, as you know, the Japanese culture, especially if you work for a very big team and big company like Honda, is uh, very peculiar at times. And then you come from Brazil, yeah, which is in many regards uh, quite different to, let's say, <laughs> Japanese culture. Yeah, uh, but they're I think, are, they I think are that actually works too. well. I yeah? think you know mm -hmm. that 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 kind of difference sometimes can be can be a positive it's a positive factor in my opinion uh but uh yeah i think um you know if if i if i was to tell foreign drivers you know like coming that want to come to japan one of the things that are important here is just you just have to uh learn uh, slowly to fit in and not try and come and change things and try to do it your own way because uh, you know, there's a different process. Uh, how, uh, I mean, the races it, themselves are different. The packages are different. So you, you, there's so many things to learn. And when young drivers come from Europe, is often one of the issues I see is like you know, uh, uh, there's so many cultural differences and so many uh, things that they would like to do. So I think this is a challenging thing. You just gotta focus on doing your job just just driving and try not to touch where uh the, the, in the other areas and that's quite that can be challenging i i see and uh, apparently your strategy worked so you won first of all you were runner up in the first year coming to japan that's extremely difficult yeah uh because as i said the japanese doing things differently here also the driving style as well yeah. as uh, the culture here is different then you won it the the second year you won the um formula nippon 
which is also very challenging a series, uh, highly regarded all over the world. And you won the Super GT uh, GT 300 yeah. series, as well as other accolades and um, prizes and awards over your long career. What are your proudest of? What achievement here in Japan? Uh, I don't know if I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm the uh, proudest of one victory itself or one championship itself. itself. I'm just proud that I was able to put all these opportunities together and then come to where I am today. That is a reason to be proud um, because it's never really just one thing that you do that is going to change everything. Um, it's just a combination of you got to keep going, you know, and it's so difficult um, because I know, you know, sometimes drivers that have a huge potential and I'm not speaking only about race drivers. I think in, in sports itself, you know, like it, you, if you have results and there is just a, a, a little bit of a um, hesitation afterwards or you just it's sometimes you don't make the next step or the next jump or the next opportunity. So um, I think if, if I can say that I'm proud of, it's like of using all the opportunities to, uh, to have a long professional career, which is, uh, yeah, not so easy in car racing, I would say. Oh, well spoken, well spoken. But I have to ask you, I mean, in, in sports, there's always ups and downs. Yeah. What was the greatest challenge in your racing career up to date uh, you had to overcome? Mm, the greatest challenge? Uh, that's a good question. No, I mean, you know, like there are things that you just... Uh, the I think the challenges are constant. So, um, you know, I think, for example, like when I came to Japan, I didn't... I, I always drive in a one-make uh, series with one type of tires. When you come to Japan, especially in Super GT, we have tire development. So sometimes it can be challenging to, when you focus on the car development and when you focus on the tire development, sometimes a young driver just wanna go fast and doesn't care about what is important in the car, what is important on the tires. But then it is challenging to learn to separate both things. Sometimes you gotta work on the car, sometimes you gotta work on the tire and then focus and just stay on that path. Because if you're looking for lap times, y you can get them, you can get them. Uh, but sometimes you don't make progress as understanding what changes are going to be uh, beneficial. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's so much tire development. It's the country in the world that has the most development of uh, tires. So as we, as you know, in Super GT we have uh, Bridgestone, uh, Yokohama, Dunlop, Michelin, oh, and right. all this competition. It's you know, it's only Can't in be Japan. Frustrating, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, even in Formula One, they only have one make, and in Europe, it's all one make. Uh, the most championships around the world were one make. So this makes it uh, challenging for the driver for sure. Interesting, very interesting. Um, now. The new season will start very soon, and you have just signed a new contract with uh, Team Condo. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Continue. What is the outlook? What is uh, what are your hopes? What are your goals this season? Well, uh, we had two great seasons. You know, 2020 and 2021. Uh, 2020, winning the championship, and last year coming so close again. Um, you know that um, Team Subaru was just just a little better at the end uh, winning the championship but we we had a good a strong season and i think we just have to keep you know doing what we have been doing and um you know we've obviously made progress other teams also make progress and this is racing you know just a consistent uh progress and you just have gotta gotta always catch up or you always gotta try and set the pace uh so now we start testing, we start testing new tires, what we finished last year with, and then we try to improve that on until round one. Um, you know, and, and so we have ideas that we've come, you know, uh, uh, since the last race that we've had, and then, okay, we'll try and testing, see if they work. 
prepare for round one and here we go again you know so uh, the goal is always to win the championship there's nothing short of of course of that of course of course yeah has um i have to ask it uh, has COVID 19 uh, somehow affected your work it i mean uh, uh, you know for us uh yeah i mean uh, at first in 2020 the races were postponed and then uh, after that we shortened the calendar no we didn't shorten the calendar we just made uh, three uh, venues uh, instead of the whole um, i think seven venues that we have during the season so we decided to keep uh, on venues that were more accessible to all the teams and obviously with um, the a little bit more distance to the public as you know super gt we have a lot of um, interaction with the fans. The fans come into the pits. They, you know, come. We have uh, um, the fan, uh, the pit walk, and then they all come and take pictures. And it's a very important part of Japanese traditional Super GT racing, which is uh, we are there for them. We are there giving them uh, the the show. So that's how we can thank them yeah yeah but sometimes uh, it's not even the star is not the the driver sometimes there are other stars yeah. there well yeah i mean uh, <laughs> especially you know, when it comes to taking photos <laughs> yeah yeah as you know you know japan i think in europe uh, things have changed lately but uh in in japan we still have you know um our um yeah the race, race queens race yeah. queens yeah, which yeah. is uh, yeah. a tradition for many yeah. many years in japan yeah yeah it works it works definitely works <laughs> um unfortunately i've never been uh, i've never attended one of your races mm. um the local races here in japan uh but my big boss and you know uh, the chairman uh, shiga uh, has attended several of your races right and yeah. uh, has even sponsored uh, some of your uh, campaigns yeah so actually we we've, we've had one opportunity that uh um, which uh, Shiga was able to uh, support me, which was the IndyCar race that I did. Uh, that was a one-off event when IndyCar came to Japan. Um, one of the teams they had a uh, they they had a driver missing. Like what what happened? They had a sponsor um, issue when coming to Japan. I think um, they were looking for someone in the last minute, and and I was the at the time, I was the current champion of the Super Formula Series, and uh, that was the closest thing to an IndyCar. Um, so it was a road course in Motegi, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was a great event. Um, we had the best qualifying uh, of the whole season for the team, uh, and we're running well in the race. Unfortunately, we had a we had a fuel pump issue, but and had to retire the car, but. You know, it's it's racing, but uh, it was a great memory. Excellent. Now we coming a little bit to softer topics. You are you are living in Japan now for for ages. Uh, you're married uh, to a Japanese yes. uh, person, and um, fans probably know that already. But you are a great um, fan of cycling. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I yeah. I mean, r more in the last five or six years, I would say um, probably. Yeah, I started I think around 2014, and I at first I was doing it alone, but then I found friends and people who were more experienced and uh, started to do it together, and then it became a little bit more serious. Right, uh, and do you use a GoPro camera? Ah, uh, no, I mean I, you know, I, I, I think I used to do a little bit more of a, you know, uh, Insta stuff, but. Uh, and lately, I'm just focusing on the training itself, and I think, uh, yeah, there's as many aspects of cycling that are great uh, for training, and there's some relationship of cycling with car racing as well. You know, you always, for me, going to the gym um, uh, is very specific. You do one thing or another that you know um, is important, but uh, training in a bike is for me quite uh, beneficial I find because of one you're handling something you're touching the ground you're feeling the grip you're riding with others you have to have awareness you have to you're basically working out not only your body but you're also working out your vision and your awareness which is so important in car racing you know especially in Super GT we have so much 
uh, so many cars on track and you always in traffic. So if you understand that, I think this really helps you sort of, you know, um, yeah, feel more comfortable in that situation. Right. So uh, a lot of races, as I know, they, they do cycling, but all of them I know of, uh, they had accidents. In fact, yeah. in their careers, well, how about you? I, cycling is, a, you know, I think uh, many sports, you could say that, you know, there are some danger factor. Um, yeah, the most recent one was Alonso, I think. Yeah, last uh, year he yeah, had, last a, year, had yeah. a crash before, before the Formula One start uh, of campaign. the season. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you have to, you have to be your own judge and uh, <laughs> make the calculations yourself and, you know, um, it's important to uh, you know to to know where the limit is. Uh, you cannot go over that. Um, but uh, yeah, there are some great places to ride to cycle to do cycling in Japan, and it's such a pleasure to travel around with friends. Uh, we go to the mountainside. We go to uh, the north. Uh, we go to the coast, and uh, we can enjoy you know not only cycling the great food and views and so it's there's a so many things that are good and you can build friends as well and yeah. uh, so it's it's something i really enjoy doing as part of training yeah. it's a very yeah. uh it's it's a it's a pleasure to do training like yeah. that so mm -hmm. uh i heard that you even convinced the uh, chairman shiga into uh <laughs> to do cycling well, well his cycle uh, nah, you know, bicycle he, is very special i heard it's uh yeah his cycle, right? it, it's uh yeah so um yeah well i have i i have a few road bikes that i do training with but i have a, a bike that i use in the city yeah it's an e-bike and oh, yeah. uh right. and uh one day he saw me with it and he's like uh what is that? And mm. uh, and I pushed the button on my phone, started to make noise, and he's <laughs> like, "Oh, that's really cool!" And yeah. he's like, really interested to find out more about it. Mm. So then uh, um, he tried it, and uh, he's like, well, "I think he ordered it the next hour." So <laughs> yeah, 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 I saw it that. was in his house the next week. So, exactly, yeah. you know, showing it off you to know, you, right? Yeah, I remember uh, that. That's and I funny. actually, I went there when he arrived. I went there and uh, helped yeah. him. Uh, yeah put it together because it's yeah, a yeah. yeah it just comes a, in a yeah. box and you just gotta put things together exactly yeah and now probably sitting somewhere in his house <laughs> <laughs> i wish I, I had this because i live in Roppongi, you know it's on a hill and every day i have to go up and down several times sometimes you know yeah i wish yeah. i had an e-bicycle yeah and Tama I, too <laughs> i wonder how much he has uh, ridden uh, yeah exactly so yeah the mileage on this yes it's probably good condition in, in pristine condition yeah. um yes now time we are approaching the end of yeah. this uh, wonderful <laughs> interview. I really enjoy it. And yeah. uh, but we have um, you know, we want to introduce a little bit like um, like a flash round. Okay. Flash questions, right? Yeah. So you have to quickly answer these questions. Uh, right. These are A or B type of questions. Okay. Okay. Good. Let's start with uh, the most difficult one: sushi or Kobe beef? Oh my God! Uh, a good sushi. Brazilian food or Japanese food? Brazilian food. Oh, okay. I, I do. I love Japanese food, but actually, I just miss Brazilian food a lot. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Extreme E or Formula E? Uh, Formula E. The next question is very easy. Ayrton Senna or Lewis Hamilton? Uh, it's I. You know, both are great. I don't. You know, I can't. <laughs> Uh, and such a big fan of Lewis. Of course, I, I'm a huge fan of Senna. It's 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 like uh, I mean, it's very difficult to pick one. I mean, um, I would say Senna, but uh, yeah, it's difficult. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and these these two, qu two questions are relatively easy. What's your favorite restaurant here in Tokyo? If there is any, oh, there's so many, of course. Oh my God! Uh, you know, I don't know if you At have the to moment. say that there's a lot of restaurants. So many, so many. Um, actually, uh, let me see. Um, there was like this a small restaurant. It closed down, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, it mm -hmm. was in Omotesando, which I really like. It's a, it was a Thai food restaurant, yeah. but it's closed down. Uh, so uh, now I don't know what I think. Uh, I would say 
There's one that I go with my wife mm. that is in Roppongi, which is mm. like a kaiseki meal, and oh. we really like that. Yeah. And we do it. So we, we don't do, do like it too Japanese often. Food, yeah. And mm. uh, but there are many options. Yeah. Tokyo is it's amazing. It's yeah. you can't think of. You just have to start by okay, what kind of food, uh, you know, what kind of place, and then mm. kind of ambient you want, and then you have still so many to choose from, right? It's like the most uh, incredible town to eat so yeah. it's difficult um, foreigners who come to japan they they do come also for the food right and they have so much to choose from right? yeah and i would course, say mm. there is one little place that i that i like that i can point out it's a place near Rapongi. Mm. it's a singaporean uh chicken restaurant okay. that i really like i, I, I actually I heard about this it's Bojuba? it's yeah. uh yeah it's yeah. uh basically it's just yeah. behind the corner of Tataya. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know and, that. Yeah, uh, it's famous. It's, it's very behind. small, and it's, it's very like, small. Like an insider and tip, yeah. they basically have two mm. things on the menu, yeah. and it's so good, so good. Yeah, I gotta try this out. Okay, and final question: What's your favorite spot in Tokyo where you like to hang out right now? My favorite spot, mm. uh, I would say Yoyogi, Yoyogi Park. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. more like I like to mm. be somewhere where a little bit more space and right. yeah yoyogi i like the area around yeah. there yeah of course you can cycle there too right of course yeah no? yeah yeah so. cycle around. Oh. and uh is it still f free to enter in terms of covid19 yeah it's, it's, no problem, it's huh? yeah it's uh, relatively okay uh, yeah. i think they have some restrictions for yeah. now the you know coming into the sakura season oh, hanami right. exactly yeah, yeah it's a but, very uh, popular spot right yeah it's true uh jp Thank you very much for this interview. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. A, pre a pleasure to be here on the show. And uh, yeah, I I hope I can uh, yeah keep uh, keep going, keep uh, succeeding, and come back here again to tell you more stories. And uh, appreciate it. Thanks for the invitation. That concludes this episode of Eyes on Japan by Hershishiga. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed the show, we hope you subscribe on your preferred platform and leave a rating and comment. My name is David Schneider.